I'm not that interested. <laughs> hmm. Are you a little nervous? Just a little, yes. You reached out to do an interview, but you're nervous. Yeah, I know. It's like, like how my mom was like, how are you gonna be a singer if you don't like being on stage? <laughs> it's like one of those moments, I know. <sighs> so there must be something you really wanna communicate to people if you were willing to overcome a little bit of anxiety to share your story. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, this is so much but I, I will break it down in small, tiny pieces here and there if people are willing to listen, of course. Is it okay if I ask you a question about your living situation? Mm -hmm. In the email where you requested an interview, you talked to me about how growing up you experienced homelessness, and today we're filming this interview in a hotel lobby. Yeah. Tell me about your living situation today and throughout your life. Well, for today, um, I actually was just kicked out of my mom's place. And for some odd reason, she won't tell me why, but I also guess that she's probably burdened with me at this point. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of not my fault that I was born with a skin condition. What type of emotions do you feel about your relationship with your mom when you consider that that has happened? Um, there's a lot of things. Cause she wasn't really emotionally there, so it, I couldn't say she was my rock, cause she wasn't. TV was, music was. Um, I can't say she was the person I ran to, cause she wasn't. What's your biggest hope for the future? Mm, I don't have any hopes for the future. I'm already struggling in my present, and there's nothing good to unwrap in it. It's nothing even remotely good I can unwrap in my present. So I can't really think about a future if I really don't really. I didn't even expect it to make it this far in the first place, to be honest. Do you mean for mental health reasons or because of your physical disability? Because of my physical disability, yes. Like I was not planning to live this long. <laughs> I was not. Do people with this disability generally not live this long? No, especially as a, like a rare birth that I had because I was literally born, I literally grew outside of the sac. Like I grew, like you know how like when babies are born, they're born in this mucus sac, they're supposed to protect them and stuff like that. I grew on the outside. Like I wasn't, I wasn't really supposed, really was supposed to survive the birth either. But I guess since my mom thought quick, I don't know why, but she thought quick and she gave birth to me in water, which saved me apparently and I don't know why. You know, when I interview most people and they live past their expected life expectancy, they're kind of jubilant, like, yes, look at me, I'm still going. But you kind of seem like you're like, ugh. <laughs> still here. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you just nailed it right on the, right on the head. Like, Oh my god, I didn't mean to laugh that hard, but it was just so accurate. I get I get laughing at the dark humor of it all, but um I wish we had a world where where you felt valued is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but we don't. My skin condition is so rare. What is your skin condition? Um it is epidermolomic hyperkeratosis ichidiosis bullosa. So what that means is is that I have a defectiveness and my keratin 12, keratin 10 and 12, and I'm also missing a layer of skin. Where on your body does this skin condition impact? Actually everywhere. I have like tons of sores on my legs, so right now I'm actually wearing shorts because I actually have a sore right here, I have a sore here, I have a sore here. I just have a lot of like sores and I get them quite often, like really off, like so much. Is it painful? Very. It's like having little cuts all over your body. It's actually my feet, my hands, my face. It's all over. It's all back, everywhere. Has there ever been a time in your life where you did feel accepted by others? Mm, I mean, I didn't have friends until I was 17. Like, and I didn't start having emotions until like maybe 19, 18. What do you mean you didn't have emotions till then? I don't know. Well, growing up in my household, like as in a black household, and when you're a kid, they'll tell you that your emotions don't matter. 
like all the time. They'll be like, you're a child, what do you know? I literally be getting cracks like in the heels of my ankles. Like I, I had like four cracks just going all the way around, like all the way around my ankle. It was like, if you could measure it, I think it was like this long and it was like this deep. Like it was so deep that it was like li literally leaving like pools. Like if I sat there for like maybe like two seconds, it'd be like a pool of blood just sitting around my ankle. And that will literally have me like bedridden. Like it's like deep in there. And then every time you try to like bend your ankle, like whatever rush of air gets in it, it just feels like alcohol is just being poured. That's just how much pain I'm in. Did people believe you? No. My own mother don't really believe me like that. She still will be like, get your butt out of bed. You're just being lazy. Is it that you didn't experience emotions or you just didn't feel like you could express what you were feeling? It's, it's both actually. Cause for some reason I, I'm very, like I'm very slow to love. I'm very slow to like, I can get offended real fast, but that's, that's different because people used to come at me all the time. So I guess that's the only thing I wasn't really slow to considering the fact I had to defend myself 24 seven, but I've never really experienced hugs. I've never really experienced, because people couldn't pick me up as a baby. They couldn't, they couldn't pick me up whatsoever. I would start bawling, and I wasn't the type to cry. I don't know how to describe the pain that I'm in 24-7. And then people just make it seem like, because I just keep a happy face on, but it's like, I have to. Because if I don't, you're just going to see me cry 24-7, and that is not fun. You don't want to be known as the depressed friend. <laughs> just sitting there. Just sad, I don't move either. Like when people invite me over, I literally just sit on the couch. I don't move that often if I can help it. It's hard to exercise, I can't stay fit because I can't sweat. And then if I get, again, if I get too hot or if I get too many cracks or too many sores, I can't wear certain types of clothing. Also, I can't sweat. Like there's nothing but heat trapped like in my body. So I can't, I can't sweat. There's no, there's no ex, like there's no, so I'm just sitting here scratching and scratching and scratching until like I'm bleeding and there's giant sores everywhere. My skin condition actually has like a really weird smell and when I get too hot or sometimes my own emotions can make the smell even worse. Like if you can tell when I'm anxious, like super anxious because the smell would just get really bad and can and my temperature like my body temperature would just tighten like i do get really hot that's why i try to control my emotions sometimes do you feel accepted today no <laughs> not at all <sighs> i mean it's hard with dating and everything else because you like like you don't I, I can't smell myself so i don't know if i'm having a good day or a bad day when it comes to my smells i can't like it's it's a part of me, so I can't really smell what everybody else is smelling. And I ask somebody to describe it to me. Sometimes, for some reason, I smell like chocolate. And then some other time, I smell like fried chicken. And then 99% of the, the rest of the time, I smell like something unknown. And I'm just like, what is that? Like, what does unknown mean? Do you mind describing the, the science of why you do smell? <laughs> it's due to the fact that I can't sweat. And the fact that I also have a lot of bacteria underneath my scales, so a lot of my soaps have to be antibacterial. Do you say underneath your scales? Yes, scales. That's how they're described in the, te the technical medical term as it's called scales. There was this bus driver, my mom actually had to take us, because she had to take us to school after this, like every day she would not let us drive on the school bus because of this incident. I guess I was smelling really bad that day and she sprayed me, she sprayed me with um, the air freshener she had just sitting in the, uh, in her compartment. And I had a lot of open sores and wounds that day. And I ended up in the hospital for about two weeks unconscious. Yeah, people used to throw pencils and books at me and then the teachers, my teachers would just watch. And then when I tried to defend myself, that's when they came and tried to, like, it was a lot. 
One of my teachers also said something so offensive to me, and then when it was brought up, she really tried to lie and say she didn't say it, but I'm like, I was standing right there. <laughs> and everybody in the classroom heard it. Like, okay, I get it, I smell. Like, what, what can I do about it? That's what she told you? <laughs> no, it was, um, because they always try to force me to do group projects with people. So we were doing a group project and um, the guy at the time didn't want to sit next to me because of my smell. He was, she was like, well, you stank too. That's probably why she don't want to be next to you either. I was like, oh, okay. That was just like uncalled for. Like, why did I even have to be brought up into it? Does that decrease the internal value you have of yourself? No. Good. <laughs> Not at all. Well, is that because you just had to deal with it your whole life, so you kind of build up walls? Pretty much. I have to. I'm, I'm a little squishy thing on the inside. I'm, yeah, I'm a very sensitive person. <laughs> I can tell, because there's a few times where you've talked about your interests, and you've just lit up, and you love to talk about books and video games and music. Yeah. We were talking about your love of K-pop off camera. Uh. I just love it. I just want to go to one concert. Just one BTS concert. One backstage and I will be the happiest person in the world. Like, I don't really ask for anything. Like, even growing up, I didn't ask for much. I just, I don't know. I just wanted to be treated normally. That's all I pretty much asked for. Just, just to be treated normally. But then at the same time, I keep forgetting. I can't just be treated normally. Like, if people want to go on hikes or if they want to just sit outside. I can't cannot do that. I can't. I feel like in my soul, I'm not an outside person anyway, but it's just my skin condition makes it way worse. I'm more aware of bugs being around me. Like, I can just... Ooh, like, what, what do bugs do? Like, okay, I do attract a lot of flies. I do. It's not, it's not, it's, it's an embarrassing feature to have, but you're just sitting here minding your business and you just got like three or four or five flies just buzzing around you and you're just like I must smell awful today I got really bad I just I just sink in my chair and like I hope nobody else can smell me I just I just don't want to know mm -mm. that's why I prefer to stay at home I don't got to worry about all that I just don't want to be that person to where people always seem that I'm bitter or like People already get that impression from me anyway because I'm really on guard when I meet new people sometimes. But if I feel like you're not a bad, like I can tell if you're a bad person. But for some reason, I, in my soul, I'm just like, mm -hmm. you're not the person I just want to open up to. Like there are different, like I have a teacher, I had a teacher who used to, I used to just sit in the classroom and mind my business, but all around me, there will be so many people just talking about me for some for some reason. And I'll just be sitting there minding my business. I don't talk to people at all, but I literally would just be sitting there, and all I hear is, "Oh, she's staying." Uh, da -da 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 -da. And then I just be like, I literally be visibly sad. And the first thing people will say to me, "You look like you don't like people," and I'm just like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't." How did that make you feel when you would hear people say that? <sighs> sad. Cause like, it's like they could literally ask me or some people would try to defend me and be like, well, maybe she just don't have hot water at home. I'm like, you can clearly see that I am not like other people. These are just ever growing. Um, it's my family's been trying to get them to go away, but I keep telling them it's not going to go away. Cause this, this is my skin. This is, this is exactly what it's going to be like before like even when I die it's gonna be like this people just don't know how much that just being the, your normal self like you just have normal hands and normal skin you don't have to worry about this but there's a lot of things I have to factor in when touching things when going out I can't just be like <gasps> with everything because I don't know what people have like got on their hands and since my hands can crack open so deeply like so deep to where I have left puddles of blood on the floor. So I just can't be out here touching things. I have to be very mindful of where I'm going. I couldn't be in a regular classroom for too long. Why? Um, my teachers didn't like me. They did not like the way I smelled. I guess my smell was a, lot, it was a little too distracting. And 
they weren't really that strict, but for some reason they were really strict with me about my uniform. And I know that wasn't the case because there were people who would show up without their bow ties and they would just sit in the class and they would just pay a penalty. But if I show up without my bow tie, I had to go sit in a gymnasium the entire school day. I can't sit outside in the sun because I'm also 95% sure that skin cancer will happen. And my dermatologist have told me this because I have nothing protecting me from the UV rays. Nothing. I can't even wear sunscreen either. Because it burns. There's a lot of things that I can't wear. Like wear perfume, I have to spray on my clothes and I have to let them air dry for a little bit because again, it, the chemicals will sting. It's not, it's really not fun. So a skin condition can really impact every aspect of your life. Pretty much, but I guess the government doesn't see it that way since I'm not blind or deaf or, you know, I can walk. Do you mean you don't get any kind of type of disability benefit? I do, but it's super small. And there's actually a lot of stuff they don't cover. My main income is Social Security, so... And, like... They only give me about $800, pretty much. Per month? Yeah. And then I also got to pay for Vaseline, and I be have to pay like $160 worth of Vaseline every month. So that's got to go somewhere, and then I'm buying like $150 worth of soap. Oof. And then I'm talking about I have to buy other things to mix in my Vaseline, because just Vaseline doesn't keep me moisturized for the entire day. What happens if you're not appropriately moisturized? I will break, as in like, skin can shrivel up and fall off. I can crack open. What's your favorite thing in the world? Food. It is food. Um, I wanna travel to eat food. I mean, if I could live in Korea, I really would because they their food looks so good. I love, I literally just went to go get, it's not Korean, but I literally just went to go get Chinese hot pot the other day. <sighs> it, it, that's the only thing that makes life tolerable is food. I don't know. I guess, yeah, emotionally eating is not well, but when I travel and do it, it makes me feel just slightly better. Just slightly, it kind of makes me want to forget. It makes me forget just a little bit. And then I'm just, you know, smack back dab, back to reality like Eminem. What has it been like to be on camera and share your story? Was it something that was kind of like ah, releasing or was it kind of traumatic reliving it all? It was just a little traumatic reliving. Oh, I did, I try not to cry a little bit. It's because I don't, there's a lot of things that I could talk about, but then there'll be a lot of triggers. And like, there's this. This is only a like, not even a fraction of what I went through. Like, it's not. <laughs> People literally have tried to fight me over my smell, and it's just ridiculous. Like, I literally have people come up to me, and nothing but aggression and anger. People have cornered me at school just to call me a stinky. Like, they will literally just curse me out. It's just, it's not like, it's just, it's not. Oh, it's a lot, but. Well, I'm sorry you had to experience all that and I thank you for sharing it because I think it's important for people to know the reality of what you and I'm sure other people out there experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Before we end this interview, is there anything else you would like to say? Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess, no, I don't want to sing. Like, that would be weird. <laughs> Just a little bit. You can say anything you'd like. Because I do want to sing a small bit. I do have a small piece. If people like it, I want to get feedback on it. Because I do have a... I do write some music. I do write music. And I do want people to listen to it. So... Do it. Um, I guess... Oh, can I get my phone? Yeah. I need it for the instrumental. Excuse me. Why don't I jump behind the camera so you can have your solo shot? You thought you had... It's just too bad You thought you had My sense of being No time for feeling Blood on my cup It hard stains stuff Try cleaning 
Why you wear so many Blood on my carpet heart Carpet heart Oh, that's what I want to sing. <laughs> you wrote that? Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of other music that I, I write that I'm working on. But yeah, I wrote that.